Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna with Hasna's Anatomy and today we're discussing the anatomy of the ureter. Guys, before you get started, do please do me a favor and click on that subscribe button, turn your post notifications on because today is your lucky day. So let's get started with the video. So guys, there are two problems with the ureter, all right? I'm gonna be honest with you, we're very blessed to have two ureters, but that's where the problem stems from. Because there are two, and they're on the right and the left side because there is a difference in the right hand and the left side of the organs in the abdominal wall. Therefore, there's gonna be a lot of relations to learn and they're gonna be different for right and left side. All of that is gonna be actually made simple by me myself. So let's get right into it. Basically what your uh, ureter is gonna do is convey the urine from the kidney comes from the renal pelvis begins as the renal pelvis it goes all the way down and over here your bladder lies inside your pelvis right and then from the bladder through the urethra the urine basically passes out so it has to get all the way to the bladder and somehow we have to bring it to the bladder it's basically a muscular tube conveying urine from the kidney all the way to the bladder right the important things about the ureter that we have to learn today are the course its relations and the constrictions right that's our main focus and that's exactly what's going to be asked from you in the exam Let's talk about its course. Basically, it begins from the renal pelvis. And when it begins, it runs downwards and medially. So remember, it's going to be towards the medial side. We all know there is a whole vertebra going on here, right? These vertebra have wings. Just kidding, not wings. They're actually transverse processes. Ureter is going to pass through the tips of these transverse processes, all right, as it goes down. And then it, there comes a point where the aorta becomes your two common iliac arteries and the common iliac arteries terminate to become external and internal iliac arteries. So where that common iliac artery is going to terminate is where your ureter is going to enter the pelvis. I hope that makes sense. And once it enters the pelvis, guess what? The story does not end. It actually just begins. It's running downwards and medially. Now it runs backwards and laterally. All right. So it's going to run backwards and laterally when it enters the pelvis. Finally, when it reaches close to the bladder, it goes forwards and medially once again and enters the base of the bladder in the trigone. All right. So that is a basic course of the ureter. It begins as the pelvis. It runs downwards and medially crosses the tips of the transverse processes. Another thing over here is the psoas major muscle going to be lying posterior to the ureter. Remember this very important relation of the fact that the ureter is going to be lying anterior to the psoas major muscle. Say that to yourself once, well and good. And then it enters the pelvis, which is marked by the termination of the common iliac artery. And then it runs backwards and laterally. Opposite the ischial spine, it turns forwards and medially and enters the base of the bladder and there you have it the urine has been delivered to your bladder successfully well done well not you but well done to the ureter so now let's talk about the constrictions of the ureter basically we're going to get the easy stuff out of the way and then we're going to talk about the questionable stuff right so the constrictions of the ureter are the places where the ureter is kind of constricted or uh, the lumen has been narrowed. This is first going to be at the pelvi-ureteric junction. The pelvi-ureteric junction where the renal pelvis is becoming the ureter. So right about over here. The second constriction is going to come at the pelvic brim. Pelvic brim, what is the pelvic brim? It's basically where the false pel pelvis ends and the true pelvis begins. This is lying at the sacral promontory. That's its second constriction. Next constriction comes when it's being crossed by the ductus deferens in males and the broad ligament of uterus in females. I hope you can remember that. Final two constrictions lie within the bladder. The first constriction lies within the bladder wall and the final constriction lies when it opens into the trigone of the bladder so these are the five constrictions that i want you to memorize as badly as you can because this is definitely coming in your exam and if it doesn't come in your exam that's a good thing right so here comes the tricky part sadly the relations of the ureter yes definitely they're going to cause a lot of problems but guys here's the deal there is nothing difficult in this world unless we make it difficult right since you've clicked on this video the word difficult is erased from everybody's dictionary okay maybe i'm bragging but the truth is that the relations of the ureter are difficult always remember learn in short form make shortcuts and that is what we're going to apply over here in the relations so guys whenever you write the relations write this down this is a shortcut i've made just for you guys so that you can remember the ureter very well and literally this is the trick that all of your friends are going to be asking you about but don't tell them just give them the link to my video First, I want you to write uh, the different locations of the relations. First, we're going to talk about the relations within the renal pelvis. 
outside just immediately outside the kidney the relations in the abdomen in the entire uh, course of the ureter that is in the abdomen sadly there is another course called the pelvic course so in the pelvic part what are their relations and even further division in the pelvic part i want you to write the males versus females we all know that competition exists everywhere even in the human body itself so guys this is the division i want you to do have you done the division we're going to go step by step so do not get overwhelmed by what you read in the book we're going to make it easy in the renal pelvis i just want you to remember the renal vessels all i want you to do is front and behind the ureter are the renal vessels can you remember that how simple is that all right so that is level 1 let's go to level 2 and advance it a little bit in a level 2 just outside the kidney you're going to write the same thing just copy paste the renal vessels these this time are going to be lying anteriorly and posteriorly is going to be which muscle the psoas major muscle i told you guys to remember this muscle because it's going to be lying behind the ureter so it is going to come right outside the kidney posteriorly to the ureters up to now we're good i think we're doing a very brilliant job we probably got like 1.5 mark for this what about the rest of the 3.5 marks that we need 3.5 right uh, i'm really bad at maths let's just move on in the abdomen what happens is that we're going to divide the relations into the right kidney and the left kidney all right these are the anterior relations that we're dividing all right but the posterior relation is going to remain constant it's going to be just one in the abdomen and that is of that one muscle that i told you is running behind the ureter okay, we do not have to worry too much about the ureter's posterior relation thank you soas major now let's talk about the anterior relations right and left are going to differ but how are we going to learn these all i want you to do is write this mnemonic for the right side i want you to write drip rig and for the left i want you to remember ps i am from lgs so it's the drip rig for the right side and ps lgs for the left side now i want you to remember within these the letters p stand for the peritoneum obviously what else are you going to find in the abdomen and the letter g is going to stand for the gonadal vessels pretty simple so i'm sure even if you can't remember all of those mnemonics at least you can remember the p the peritoneum and g the gonadal vessels so now let's complete the mnemonics anteriorly on the right side in the abdomen we have the d for duodenum r for the right colic vessels i for the iliocolic vessels p for peritoneum then we have the rig r stands for the root of mesentery i is for the ileum g is for the gonadal vessels so pretty much all of those organs that we've already studied about no rocket science here in the left side anterior relation is the ps lgs p for peritoneum now s in the left side comes this very important part of your colon which is the sigmoid colon all right so sigmoid colon and its mesentery right l is for the left colic vessels g for the gonadal artery and s for the sigmoid meso colon and we're done with the relations in the abdomen now let's talk about what happens in the pelvic part in the pelvic part i just want you to write down the posterior relations and the lateral relations all right posterior relations you're going to be like where in the pelvis What are the posterior relations? Someone's just gonna come to you and be like, "You're silly." They're pretty simple. They're actually the internal iliac. All right. So posterior relations are gonna be silly. I is for that internal iliac artery, and I again is gonna be for the internal iliac vein. All you have to add to that is what? There is this joint that lies. Sacrum is going to be joining with hip bone. This joint is known as the sacroiliac joint. So obviously the ureter is going to cross that old joint. So S is for that sacroiliac joint. All right, lying posterior to the ureter. And then we have the L. L is for the lumbosacral trunk. Lateral relation is just O Q because laterally is going to be all the things that are obturator. I'm sure you've heard that word before. Yes, in the lower limb, obturator nerve, obturator vein, obturator artery, obturator internus covering fascia. That's all you have to write over there, and that is for your pelvic area. Now for males versus females, all I want you guys to remember is in the males. it will be crossed from its lateral to its medial side by the ductus deferens in the females it's going to be crossed from the lateral to the medial side by the uterine artery and also in the males if you can remember this is bb the below and behind the ureter will be the seminal vesicle another male genital organ all right so if you can remember all of these relations you are good to go you're probably going to top your entire anatomy prof because of it so we can go through a little bit of a revision what are the relations of ureter 
guess what all you did was watch this video and now you are acing the relations of ureter first you're going to divide them into locations the renal pelvis outside kidney abdomen the pelvis males versus females done now let's talk about within the renal pelvis the renal vessels outside kidney anteriorly renal vessels posteriorly our favorite psoas major muscle the abdomen we divided the anterior relations into right and left and posteriorly we just silently put that muscle the psoas major anteriorly we came to the right right side was the drip rig guys this is this new cool word so remember it the drip rig p stands for the peritoneum g for the gonadal vessels what else do we have left the d is for the duodenum the r is for the root of the mesentery r is for the right colic vessels i is for the ileocolic vessels another i for the ileum all right L is the PSLGS, P again for the peritoneum, S for sigmoid colon, L for left colic vessels, G for gonadal artery, S is for the sigmoid mesocolon. Then we went to the pelvic part and we divided it into posterior relations and the lateral relation. In the posterior relation, everybody was silly because S was for sacroiliac joint, I for the internal iliac artery, internal iliac vein, L for the lumbosacral trunk. Laterally, we had all the O's and there we go. In the males, we had the ductus deferens crossing from lateral to medial side. In the females, we had the uterine artery crossing from lateral to medial side. And and in the males, if you want to remember this below and behind, the ureter was a seminal vesicle. Guys, guess what? You have nailed it. We know the ureter relations. And you know why I know that? Because if I could memorize all of that right now, you probably did too. Now, all that is left in the ureter is to learn the blood supply. And upper part is getting branches from the renal artery. Middle part is getting it from the aorta. And the lower part is coming from middle colic vesicle artery. And this is something that is going to be super easy after you've done the relations. It's like a mountain has been crossed. A hill is not going to be a problem. So that is exactly what happens when you subscribe to my channel and keep your post notifications on because that's what I do. I bring these shortcuts for you to learn anatomy. Thank you so much for watching the ureters. We're done with it and see you in the next video.